Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Uncle Steph. So in this video, we're going to learn about 15 coding languages in about 15 minutes. Quick overview so you understand some of the basics of these things and then you can make decisions about whether or not you want to learn X, Y, or Z language. All right, let's start with the most popular language in the world and that's JavaScript. JavaScript was uh, came out in 1995. I was one of the first JavaScript programmers ever. And it's largely used for website development, although you see it used in AI a little bit. And it's used a lot in client-side programming. That means in the web browser. So you got this little JavaScript program. It's called the, Jav you know, the JavaScript engine, if you will. And every web browser in the world has this. So when you write a little JavaScript code, uh, it is processed most of the time in the web browser. So React, Vue, Angular JS, these are libraries and frameworks written in JavaScript for JavaScript. They're designed to speed up the process of building common, common type of applications that we would see uh, JavaScript used to build. So JavaScript is technically a scripting language. A scripting language is a language that runs inside of a program. So JavaScript is an example of a scripting language. Python is a scripting language. Uh, Java, I would argue, is a scripting language. C Sharp is a scripting language. And there's many others, PHP, Ruby, et cetera, TypeScript. Uh, I'll get into the distinction between a scripting language and a programming language uh, later on in this video. But understand, JavaScript is the most popular programming language uh, around today. It's widely used. Well, it's the only game in town for web browser programming, you know, like I said, Google, think of React apps and so forth. Uh, it's also used on the server with a project, well, a runtime called Node. A runtime is just a nerd way of saying a, a program. Somebody wrote some software and said, hey, it was originally designed, JavaScript, to run in the web browser. Somebody said, hey, you know what, let's put it on the server as well. So you got code running in the server and you got code running in the web browser. So they brought that JavaScript engine, which was originally designed to run in the web browser, and they brought it and they put it on the server, and it's called Node. So you can then use JavaScript to do what they call server-side programming. Anyway, so what you need to take away from JavaScript right now is that it is a programming language slash scripting language. Uh, it's the most popular language in the world in terms of how many people use it. It may not be the most popular in terms of uh, whether people like it or not, but if you do JavaScript programming, you're probably, be, you're probably going to be doing something with the web, web development, uh, think web design, web app creation, that kind of thing. Although, as I said, it could be used in many other areas as well. You can do all kinds of things with JavaScript, from validating forms, making things pop up in web pages, doing animation, building games. It's quite versatile. And JavaScript is in the C family of languages. There are many languages that are in the C family of languages, including C, C++, C Sharp, Java, TypeScript, JavaScript, and others. They're in that big family of languages. It's important because once you understand one C-based language, to learn the others is pretty simple. All right, the second most popular language in the world, depending on what list you look at, is Python. Now, Python is uh, is not part of the C family of languages, but it is a scripting language. Uh, it is a scripting language. So that means that Python runs inside the Python program. It's pretty much used in AI. It's the king of AI at this point in time. It is also used in big data processing a lot. It's also used in web development, very much used in the academic space as well. So that's drives, its popularity is driven by academic use, big universities and colleges and stuff. It's also used as a general purpose scripting slash programming language. So for example, you could have big server rendering farms where they're processing tons of videos for movies or something, and that will be all managed by Python script. Scripting versus programming language. Let me clear that up for you. So traditionally, traditionally a scripting language, again, is a language that runs inside of a program. So you have the JavaScript program that processes all the JavaScript code that you write. You have a Python program that processes all the Python code that you write, so on and so forth. All scripting languages work in that way. Now, true programming language, now I'm going down the rabbit hole of nerdness here. True programming languages, things like C and C++ uh, and Assembler, they uh, don't run inside of a program. When you 
write your C++ code, and then you process it, um, and then it becomes its, its own standalone thing. It doesn't need the C application to run the C code. And when you have uh, proper programming languages like uh, C and C++, you, before they can run, you have to do something called compiling. And what that does is you're just baking all your code. So you write all your C++ code, you, read all, you write all your C code, and then you compile it. You run a compiler, which is an app that runs it, and it compiles it all down to a nice, squishy, small ball of super efficient code. And then it runs on its own. It doesn't need any other apps to run. The distinction between a scripting language and a programming language uh, is really falling away. It's, it's becoming a difference without a distinction. So I wouldn't get too caught up in that, but I just wanted to bring that up uh, just for, uh, you know, better, just to be a little bit more complete about things. Uh, in the old days, scripting languages had limited use because uh, they, uh, they processed slowly. So JavaScript code and Python code runs much, much, much slower than C++ code. So if you wrote an app to do something in C++ and you wrote an app in JavaScript to do, you wrote a, a JavaScript app to do the same thing, the C++ would do it like a thousand times faster, whatever it is. So you ask yourself, well, why, if that's the case, if C++, as an example, if it runs code so much more quickly than JavaScript, why would anybody write anything in JavaScript? Well, because to write anything in C++, it takes forever. So, for example, if you created that fictitional app in C++ and JavaScript, it would, might take you 10 days to write it in C++, and it would take you uh, an hour or two to write it in JavaScript. That's the advantage with scripting languages, and that's why these scripting lang languages were invented, like Python, like JavaScript, like PHP, and so on. Uh, they're there to speed up the process of development. You have this idea of write time and run time. Write time is how long it takes you to write something in a particular language versus runtime, how long does that code, whether it be JavaScript code or Java code or C++ code, how long does that code uh, take to run through a particular process? Compiled programming languages like a C++ and C are infinitely faster than most scripting languages. I think Swift is an exception. Swift is pretty fast. Swift is Apple's uh, programming language but it's a scripting language, but it, it's super efficient. Anyway, it's that uh, compromise between how long it takes you to write something versus how long it takes you to write something in terms of programs. And today, because CPUs and we have so much memory, CPUs are so powerful, we have so much memory, it's so fast now, it's cheap now, that the need for compiled languages like C and C++ are becoming less and less important because Computers are so fast, so even though JavaScript and PHP and uh, several other scripting languages, Python, are so slow compared to the C++ code, it doesn't matter because, okay, you take a piece of a code, C++ will do the process in one one, hand, one one thousandth of a second, whereas the JavaScript version of that uh, program will do it in one tenth of a second. So the, clearly the C++ code is much, much, much faster. But most of the time, from a user's point of view, it doesn't make a difference. Whether it takes a split second or a split of a split of a split of a second, doesn't, you won't see the difference. So it makes sense to use a scripting language in that case. Of course, if you're writing code for uh, huge, where huge amounts of data has to be processed, or you got very complex mathematic, mathematical equations that have to be processed, then you're going to want to drop down to a much faster language. Again, those cases where you need that super fast language is diminishing over time. All right, let's jump into the next language, Java. Java and JavaScript shall not be mixed up. They're different languages altogether, both from the C family of languages, so they look very similar, and they share many, many of the same concepts. All the modern languages, just about, they all share many of the same concepts. So once you learn one language well, it will be easy for you to learn subsequent languages. So Java is actually a hybrid between a scripting language and a programming language, a proper programming language, because with JavaScript, you do compile the code. Where with scripting languages, pure scripting languages, like a Python or a JavaScript, you just write the code and then you just you upload it and it runs. Whereas with Java, 
you have to, you write all your code, then you have to do something called compiling, which is baking that code, like baking a cake. And then once the code is baked, is compiled, as they say, uh, then you run the code. Why do you compile code? It just makes it run faster. So Java runs faster than Python, that's for sure. I imagine JavaScript as well. Things are always changing because they're optimizing languages and code all the time. So, but generally speaking, as a general rule, Java will run more efficiently than uh, other higher level scripting languages. When I say higher level, you have your CPU, right? The central processing unit, right? Uh, you got that, you got that chip sitting there. And you got all these layers of software in between the CPU and uh, the code that you're writing. So JavaScript is like up on high on the stack as a scripting language. And then like C++ is much lower on the stack, closer to the CPU because it's a compiled language. Assembler, which is a language that's still used once here and there, it's actually below C++ and C in terms of it's even closer to the CPU. The closer to the CPU the language is, generally speaking, it runs much faster because there's less intermediary steps, right? So when I say uh, it's a lower level language, when I say Java's lower level language, I would argue it's running a little bit closer to the CPU. Again, things are always changing, moving targets. Generally speaking, Java is a uh, compiled language. Java is what is called a strongly typed language, meaning you just have to, I'm not gonna get into details here, but you have to write a lot more code, Java's code, to get something done versus scripting languages like Python or JavaScript uh, and others. So um, these days, as I record this in 2024, it's almost September, Java is largely used in the enterprise world, meaning very large corporations use Java. So if you're writing Java code, chances are you're gonna be maintaining old pieces of software, extending them, maybe writing uh, test cases, um, and you might do a little bit of uh, Android development with Java. When Android first came out, the Android operating system first came out, it was based on Java. Since then, it's been replaced by another language called Kotlin. Anyhow, Kotlin. Kotlin is a language put out by this company called JetBrains, very good IDE maker. IDE is short for Integrated Development Environment. It's basically the software nerds use, programmers use to write code more effectively, more quickly. So Kotlin is a higher level language than Java, meaning uh, with less Kotlin code, you can get a lot more done. So uh, Google, who controls and owns Android, basically a few, several years ago said, hey, I'm, move off of Java, go to Kotlin. Partly because of the speed advantage at right time with Kotlin and partly because of legal issues. So Kotlin is largely used for the most part to create Android apps, although it is used sometimes for server-side app development. The next language, this is the redheaded stepchild of the coding world, and that's PHP. PHP was first uh, just a templating language back in the 90s, and uh, eventually it grew into a full-fledged development language. Uh, PHP is quite efficient. It does one thing very well, and that's web development, and that's pretty much it. You could use PHP for AI and stuff, but why would you? You would never do that. Use it for web development. Now, PHP is still hugely popular. It's run by so many sites, partly because of uh, content management systems like WordPress. WordPress, so many businesses have WordPress, and WordPress is created with PHP. So are other content management systems like Drupal and Joomla. So yeah, PHP is uh, huge. It's a server-side programming language, meaning the PHP code runs on the server, and it's used basically for web app creation.